In order for my videos not to get so long, I've broken them up into chunks. This is my week two of my October layout. If we haven't met, I'm Viv. Welcome to Art with Viv. And let's get started. Again, this is my set that my week two layout for October. We have my cover that I did, the cover painting, which is a beautiful raven. Or at least I think he's beautiful. And then, of course, my monthly content calendar layout and then week one i had my cute little ghosty and he was in a graveyard in the woods and now we are going to do a black cat with a spider web for week two now black cats have long been known as familiars or companions for witches they go perfectly with the spooky season and for october i went full on halloweeny for my layout designs and this week it's going to be the black cat it just there's so much tradition that it's steeped or i guess i could say folklore not necessarily tradition but a lot of folklore even my favorite halloweeny author edgar Allan poe my favorite horror author has written a story called the black cat it is quite interesting and since cats have always been thought to be familiars or companions for witches, they date all the way back to ancient times. This companionship or this association, the Norse believed, and I believe that's the Knight, the Vikings, they believed that Freya, who was a goddess or the god, goddess, I don't know what the Norse, if they call them gods or goddesses, but anyway she was in charge of death and the afterlife she was known for practicing witchcraft and it is thought that she rode on a chariot that was pulled by magical cats so cats were associated with her all the way to ancient times and witchcraft and mythology also in ancient europe it was thought that if you owned a cat and you were a female then you were a witch and appropriate action was taken towards you Okay, maybe it was an appropriate action. It was really pretty rough and awful, but action was taken against you. So cats and witches go hand in hand with Halloween. So that's why I chose my subject this week. But now I also have learned something about myself. Oh my goodness. I am... The way that I use gouache, which is what I'm using here, is gouache. And, I, and this paper is not really for gouache. It's just 160 milligrams or grams or whatever it is. It's not thick paper. It's thick enough that it doesn't bleed through. But what I've learned about myself is I cannot shake my watercolor habits. Now, in watercolor, you paint from light to dark. And in gouache, you paint from dark to and layer on the light colors and I cannot shake that habit and I just noticed it this week so I thought I would share that with you that I'm I'm still struggling with my you know with my watercolor habits or techniques leaking into my gouache techniques so here you see I've painted the lightest colors of the cat first where I want the lights and now I'm coming back in with the darker shadows that's very much what you would do with watercolor however gouache is so that you can uh, paint over it it's opaque so you can paint light colors over dark colors and you can still see the light colors in in watercolor you could never do that so I just noticed that I thought I would point it out to you in case you're new to gouache as I am and you're struggling to find your technique find what you need to do just be aware that you are going to transfer some of those habits and techniques from watercolor if that is what you do most of the time into your gouache so don't let it rattle you so what I did here is of course I've gotten my cat I did that beautiful bright moon right behind him because I wanted my cat to stand out. I did a purple night sky and I wanted the moon to look like it was glowing into the sky. So of course I pulled some of those darker yellows and some of the lighter yellows out into the night sky to make it look like it was glowing. Then I did that light layer for my cat so that I could mark out where my lightest areas were. I did not have to do that. I could have painted in black first and came back with the light colors on top but again I'm trying to shake that watercolor habit 
I am not as successful as I would like to be, but hey, I am learning and it's okay. And I am giving myself permission and you give yourself permission to make mistakes or to have a learning process and you'll be okay. It's really more of the process. So now you see, I was like, oh, I need this to be lighter. So now I am doing it more like the traditional gouache. I'm coming back with that dark, on top of that dark silhouette and adding the highlights. And it looks much better than doing it the opposite way. So again, I'm learning, you're learning, whatever medium you are in, be it gouache, watercolor, acrylic, oil, pastel, pen and ink, you're learning give yourself some grace I'm giving myself some grace and the only way though that you're really really going to get good at it is to actually do it so paint every day if you can even if you just have to paint something small because you don't have a lot of time paint every day give yourself grace pay attention to what you're doing because I wasn't at first paying attention to how I was painting and then it dawned on me I am doing this backwards I am painting this like it's watercolor I'm putting my lights first and then my darks and that's not serving me well with the way that this media works so it's a learning curve for sure that was a learning moment for me and I'm pretty happy that I have at least figured that out I've noticed it so now I can work on it and get better at it and now you see I'm going between lights and darks layering because I just can't make up my mind how the best to do it and eventually I will get there and I'll get my own technique and the way that works the best now that his face is so tiny I'm using my tiny maple um, golden maple detail brush to get those his golden eyes in there and to try to get some tiny shadows coming back with my white gouache and doing sort of some fine hairs around him so that it looks like the moon is glowing into his fur and the fur that's sticking out is almost white from being highlighted with that moon and just trying to get my forms and shapes in there using lights and darks I decided that this night was too flat so I came back and I mixed a little black in with my violet there and I made sort of the corner darker so that it looks more like night and I'm a lot happier with that so now I am going to use my little gel pen my jelly roll white pen and just draw in the spider web I could do it with gouache and a tiny brush but this is much faster, much easier. It's not a piece of fine art. It is just a decoration for my Bujo journal, my bullet journal. So I don't have to get all fussy about what materials I use. And if I feel like using a pen, it's my journal. I'll use a pen if I want to. I'm not trying to be a purist or Lord knows I am not an art snob. I like to just mix and mingle and just do whatever works the best and easiest for me. So I'm just getting that spider web in there and I just thought I would give it a little more of a spooky look to have a spider web and it also draws your attention to the cat because the strands go toward the cat and sort of envelop the cat. That was my thinking there. Even though it is just my bullet journal, I'm still trying to think of the properties or the rules of composition and how to get a focal point how to balance things out and how to lead the the person's eye to the subject which is my beautiful black cat and I think I really really love this cat I know it looks a little messy on video but in person I'm really loving this cat coming back with that white pen just adding a little bit more highlight that gives it more shape it also makes him look more shaggy so let's just do a little magic and boom there the whole layout is complete so I'm hoping that you enjoyed this I really enjoyed it it was a lot of fun to do so let's just look back on everything that we have done we have the cover page we have the monthly content planning pages then we have week one and now we are on week two so i hope you enjoyed this thank you for watching give me a thumbs up tell me in the comments if there's something else you'd like to see me paint 
Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. And I will see you again soon.